Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Let's continue to talk about a, a trick substitution. Okay, so if you see this one here, um, why do we call that this is a trick sub integral? It's not even having the right form, right? As you can see that it's not having the right form. It's really because we have a, uh, a linear turn in this quadratic expression. And in order for us to do trick sub, we actually need a uh, quadratic turn and then a constant turn only, right? We cannot have a linear turn in there. And so now because there is a linear turn, so that's actually causing problem, okay? So now you may say, what do we do then? Um, the way that we do it is that we gotta complete the square on this expression. So if we complete the square on this expression, then we can actually turn it into an expression with just the quadratic turn and then the constant turn. Okay, so let's try it. So we are going to start by writing uh, the function. Okay, so we are going to write the function as x. Okay, and then now for the denominator, um, whatever that's inside the square root, we should just factor out the, uh, the four because we don't really want this number, this coefficient, this leading coefficient in front of the x square. So we want a one instead of a four. So what do we, what do, we do? We are going to factor the four from all the turns. Okay, so let's do that. So if we factor the four, then we are going to be getting a four here. And then we are getting x squared minus x minus three over four. Okay. And then of course there was the dx there, but then that's not part of this. Okay, so now we factor the four. And what we need to do is to complete the square on this expression right here. So x squared minus x, and then there was a the negative three over four. We don't need to worry about that. All we need to do is to take this coefficient, the coefficient of the linear term, which is now negative one right? And take that negative one, and then we multiply by one half, which will give us negative one half, and then you score it. That's what you need to add to complete the score. That's actually one fourth that we are adding. Okay, so what we are going to do is that we are going to add the one fourth. So we get x squared minus x, and then we need to add the one over four. So that's what we are doing here at one over four. And then do you see what's going on here? We still have that negative three over four, but then that's not, um, that's not okay because right now we are changing the problem. So in order to, for us to negate the effect of adding the one fourth, then we need to subtract it back. So we're gonna subtract that back. So that now we are basically adding zero, so we're not changing the problem. And then all this stuff is inside parentheses, so make sure that you keep all that. And then it turns out that the fraction line is not long enough to cover all that, so let's just redraw. And also draw the radical to cover all that stuff. And then there was still the dx in there. Okay, so far so good. Now. To complete the square, this is the expression that we need. So we gotta complete the square right here. And then what is that equal to? That's going to give us. That's going to give us, let's just draw the square root first. Okay, so we have four and then times. Now the stuff inside the uh the stuff inside the parentheses would be, what do we have here for uh, when we factor this x squared minus x plus one fourth? If we factor it, then we are going to be getting x minus one over two squared. And then minus, now minus what the rest of the stuff, which is negative three over four minus one over four. And that's actually just one, right? Negative one. So we have that. And then there was still the x at the top, and then there was the dx right here. Okay, see what's going on here? If we try to multiply this out, then you are going to get back to this. Um, so if you, were, you are still wondering like how we can go from this expression, x squared minus x my, uh, plus one over four, 
and how do we go from this that expression to this expression then um, try multiplying this out so if you write two copies of those like this and then you foil this then you are going to get back to that expression okay yeah so yeah so that actually yeah so that expression actually now turns into this okay so now this is in the form for uh the trick up as you can see that that you can pretend that the whole thing is a quadratic turn and then minus the constant turn okay so now um what do we use to do the tricks up um we can do this we can actually say that the trick sub is going to be x minus 1 over 2 okay x minus 1 over 2 it's going to be secant theta okay so by now if you have watched my other videos or if you are already pretty good at the basic trick sub problems then you should know that we got to use secant right when we do the trick sub right here and then so from here, um, we should really also isolate uh, the x. So if we isolate the x, then we are going to be getting uh, x is equal to 1 over 2 plus secant data. And then also remember that we are going to define the, the inverse function for the secant. So we, all, uh, we actually need to restrict the domain for data so that the secant function is a one-to-one -one function. So to restrict that, then we actually are having um, data between 0 and pi over 2, including 0, or data is between pi and 3 pi over 2, including pi. OK, so now that will be a one-to-one -one function. Okay, but there are more stuff that we need right here. What do we need? Um, we need to take the derivative of x with respect to data because we are going to replace this dx also. So what we need to do is that the dx is going to be, what is that? That's the one half is gone, right? When you take the derivative. And then the derivative of secant data would be secant data tangent data here, and then d data. Okay, and then there are more stuff that we actually want here, it's, which is that right triangle. Because eventually we are going to need to use this triangle to switch back from data to x. So let's look at this angle here. This is the reference angle for data. Okay, so now how do we label this right triangle? It's going to be based on this expression right here. So from this expression, if we if we um if we write the left hand side of this equation as a fraction, then we can actually write it as x minus one over two all over one. Okay, so that's how you turn it into a fraction. Another way to do it is really just to get the common denominator and combine those two turns into a single fraction. It's up to you, it doesn't matter. I think this way is uh, simpler, so we'll just do it this way. Okay, so we know that secant is going to be hypotenuse over the adjacent. So hypotenuse is going to be x minus one over two. And then what about the adjacent of that angle? It's going to be one right here. And then what about the opposite side? Opposite side, we use the Pythagorean theorem, right? Square this, square that, subtract them, and then you are going to take the square root of that result and then put it here. So that's going to be the square root of x minus 1 over 2 square and then minus 1. Yeah, remember, it must be the hypotenuse square minus uh, the adjacent square so that you can... And that, yeah, so the longer side must be subtracting the shorter side. So that's important to remember. Okay, so now everything is ready. We can come back to the original problem and then we can start substituting all that stuff into the integral. So let's do that. It's going to look messy at the beginning, but that's fine. So now we have the integral here. See that the 4 can actually be simplified, right? Because it's inside the square root, so it becomes a 2 in the denominator. So we are going to have a 2 right here at the bottom. And then remember that this is actually becoming what secant, right? And this is actually becoming secant. 
Yeah, this is actually becoming Seekin, the stuff inside Seekin data. So that's actually the Seekin square data minus one. That's actually tangent, right? So you have um, the square root of the tangent is going to be tangent square data. Okay, that's inside the square root. Okay, and then also at the top, there are more stuff that you need to substitute in. Um, what do we get at the top? There is this x, and then we already isolated the x. x is this expression right here, 1 half plus secant data. So we also need to put that there. So 1 half plus secant data. Okay, it looks messy right here. And then don't forget that there is still a dx right there. The dx also needs to be filled in. So it's really easy to forget, right? So make sure that you fill in the dx also. So we are going to be getting uh, secant data, and then tangent data, and then uh, d data. So now the expression looks like that. Okay, now, what do we do next? Um, we got to simplify this integral. How do we simplify it? Uh, first, let's look at this radical tangent square. So you know that the square and the square root can cancel out, but then you're going to be having a pair of absolute value symbols around the tangent data. But now if you look at data here, data is actually in either in the first quadrant or in the third quadrant, right? Or sometimes it can be a quadrantal angle, but um, as you can see here for the tangent, then tangent is going to be positive in the first quadrant and also tangent is going to be positive in the third quadrant. So what happened is that that's always going to be non-negative. So in this case, what happens? What happens? Um, we do not really need the absolute value. So basically this is really just tangent here. Okay, so this is really just tangent data. And so what does that mean? That means we can actually cancel out the tangent right here and actually I should cancel out the whole square root as well. So now that becomes a new problem and then I actually need to clean up a lot of different things at the same time. So I need to move the one half outside the integral, not this one half, this one half right here, this two at the bottom. So if I move it outside, then it becomes one over two. Okay. And then what do we have left on the inside? Uh, we have this orange expression right here, which is one half plus secant data inside the parentheses times, times what? Now the tangent got canceled, so we only have the, uh, the secant here, right? So we have the secant data right here. And then D data. And so at this point, it would actually be a good idea to distribute the secant data to the stuff inside the parentheses so we can integrate term by term. So we are going to be getting 1 over 2 integral of um, 1 half secant data plus secant square data, d data here. Okay, so now we should ask ourselves, can we integrate this? Can we integrate that? Yes, we can integrate both of them. This one is really just finding the antiderivative for the secant data. Uh, the second one is finding the antiderivative for the secant square, which is even simpler. Okay, so now what we can do is to start, in, start the integration. So we are having one half brackets because there are stuff on the inside. So we eventually have to distribute the one half to simplify the answer. So what is the antiderivative for secant data here? Um, I'm not going to show the work for integrating the secant data. You can actually watch it in another video that I make and the link is in the description. Uh, what we are gonna do is to really just recall its antiderivative. If you have it memorized, that will be really convenient. Okay, so we have one half. And then what do we get? It's going to be ln of secant data plus tangent data. 
Okay, plus, now what is the antiderivative for secant squared? That's actually just tangent, right? If you differentiate tangent, you are going to get secant squared. So it's going to be tangent theta. And then plus the constant of integration, let's just call it C1 for now. Okay, so now what do we do? We are going to start switching back to x. That's basically done, right? That's the antiderivative, but we need to switch back to x. How do we do that? We can just use all the information that we have up here. And so now what do we do? Um, we are going to be getting, we can distribute the one half at the same time, right? So one half times one half, we get one fourth. And then the ln of now secant data. Secant data is actually already here, which is just x minus one over two. So we can put that x minus one over two over there. Okay, and then plus, now the tangent, tangent is not given, but we can find it using the right triangle. Tangent is the opposite of the angle over the, uh, over the adjacent, right? Not the hypotenuse, the adjacent. So opposite over the adjacent. So it's this radical that we want here. So we have the square root of x minus one over two, square minus one. Okay, and then we end the absolute value and then plus. Now another tangent function right there. And then don't forget to distribute the one half. So we are going to be getting one half and then tangent, right? Which is just that same radical. and then plus one half, and then um, C1. Actually, we can simply just, just call that C. And so what is this C here? C is really just the one half times the C1 because we got to distribute this one half to the C1. So we get the one half C1. And then, yeah, so that's it for all that, right? I don't see anything that we need to simplify even further. You can actually expand that one and then combine. And that's actually the same expression as what you have right here without the four, right? It's the x squared minus the x minus the three over four. It's really because we completed the square, then we, it looks like this, but then it was originally that expression. If you want, you can just replace that with the expression, but I don't see that that's necessary right here. So that's our final answer. Okay. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos to others. It will give me support to make more videos. If you have questions or have a topic that you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment. Thank you for watching this video. 